In today's show, let's recap the action from Tuesday, cover the news, Watfo, all that stuff. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. This episode of Locked On Fantasy Basketball is brought to you by McDonald's. Proudly serving communities since 1965, McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty and affordable food. It's an unofficial community center. Big thank you to our friends at McDonald's for always being there. I'm loving it. Thank you to you too also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We have got, uh, we're free, available on all platforms. We've also got shows to cover everything right across the NBA. Whatever your favorite team is, we've got a Locked On show for you. Maybe you want to hear about Dylan Brooks and his potential return for the Grizzlies. Check out Locked On Grizzlies with Sean Coleman. All right, that's was that a subtle tease to discuss what we're talking about now in the news section? Let's start with this because it does look like Dylan Brooks is going to return. Uh, tomorrow, I don't know whether that will be the case. He's currently listed questionable, but everything Taylor Jenkins is saying makes me think that Brooks will come back and he'll start pretty much straight away. Now, whether that means Bain or Melton goes to the bench, I don't know. I think it will be Melton. And how those minutes and that role is, um, how they're divided up, we really, really key for us to pay attention to. But that is how I believe it will go. And I think we'll get Dylan Brooksy Brooks returning tomorrow. Update on Rudy Gay. He's medically cleared. Uh, he will be reevaluated in another week. He's doing some three on three at the moment, and then he'll likely be back as a bench guy on the Jazz rotation. So deeper league guys will want to pay attention to that in about a week's time. And then the news has just come down about um, Big Chungus, Nikola Jokic. Big, big chungus, big chungus, big chungus, big chungus. Jokic will be suspended for one game after that incident with Markeith Morris. Morris did not get a suspension. He will miss Wednesday's game anyway due to that injury he uh, sustained with his neck. He will not play. Jokic will be out one game. Butler also received a fine for not cooperating with the uh, security review process. So, you know, snitches get stitches, that sort of shit. So he copped a $30,000 fine for that. Uh, Jokic, just the one game. Yeah, I never thought it would be more than two games for Jokic. He just gets the one and he misses Wednesday and then he's back in action. And in terms of streaming, like Jermichael Green, Jeff Green, but it's Wednesday. There's 13 games on. I don't think you need to worry about streaming anybody in for a one-game absence there. You're going to have someone on your bench who's going to be of better quality than either of the Greens, I would believe, for the Nuggets um, to throw into your lineup in place of Big Chungus there. So that situation is settled. I guess until we see the Heat and the Nuggets play again, which I believe is just after Thanksgiving. So we'll see what happens in that one. I don't think much will happen, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see if anything does eventually come of any of this alleged bad blood between those teams. All right. I think most people enjoyed this yesterday, and probably when I do this segment, it'll be on low-volume days like today. So it is time for... Yes, it's time for me to request, or yeah, I request elaboration on the table. Montrez Harrell. So, Montrez Harrell. The last two weeks, he's been awesome. He is the 22nd ranked player in those last two weeks. 22nd. That is obviously a very, very high number for Harrell. In that time, he's averaging almost 19 points with almost 10 rebounds. Two assists with 1.3 blocks, playing 31 minutes, shooting 64 from the field and 86 from the free throw line. That is key. He has always been relatively poor from the free throw line, but he is putting up some big, big numbers at the moment at yeah, that over 80 or 86% from the line. The 31 minutes, though, is probably the key thing there for us to pay attention to. In that time, well, for the season, he's also averaging, um, what, 35 fantasy points. Now, normally, he's a better points league guy than category league player. But so far this season, on the back of gigantic percentages, his category league numbers have been higher. And that's always a little bit of a red flag. For a guy, look, he could be 64% or 63% wherever he is. He could be 80%, although I doubt it, considering the best he's ever had was last year at under 71. Like, can he maintain over 80 
He's doing it on a high volume, so maybe he has improved there. But there is some real room for that to decrease, as well as those 31 minutes coming back to like 28 or 26. The last three games, Harrell has played since Gafford has returned and not been on a restriction, 28, 25, and 26 minutes. So he was playing in the games where Harrell was out, 38, 34, 35, 34. Right, that has really boosted his numbers. And then everything has come down. Now, he's still been hyper-efficient in that time. He had a 9 of 10 game from the line. He had a 5 of 5 from the line. He went 75, 82, and 71 in those last three games. So he is putting up some numbers. I'm just a little bit unsure that he is going to be able to continue doing that at that level. I'm not, I'm not confident in those free throws. That Those minutes are going to drop by three to four per game, would be my guess. But as something that doesn't always happen with Harrell, is he's really, really impressing in some of the advanced numbers. He leads this team in Raptor. Right? He, he, is, he is the best player in the Raptor metric for the Wizards this season. Very impressive stuff to see him in that area. He leads them in overall Raptor and Raptor War. 4.2 versus Dinwiddie at 3.6, and his 1.1 wins above replacement is higher than Dinwiddie's at 0.8. So that's really impressive. Beal, for example, is at 0.6. So Harrell really leading a lot. And normally, though, when he's on the court, his teams go to shit. He's second on this team in on-off, plus 12.6. The highest is Denny Avdia at plus 14. That's leading to a team, yeah, he's contributing to a 31-win differential between him being on and him being off. That is huge. That is not what Montrez Harrell has done in the past. And that is absolutely something that's worth worth looking at. His free throw rate is gigantic. It's one of the best in the NBA. That's really helping. And the fact that he's hitting them at this level is gigantic as well. So he has been, yeah, obviously super impressive. But last year, his on-off was negative 3.2. Right? He led to eight eight fewer wins per game or per season for a team. His offense is way up. His effective field goal percentage is up as well, which is important to note. Um, he's just been putting up some really, really impressive numbers, which is great. Will it continue? I don't know. That's the big question, isn't it? He is 78th in Darko, which is taking some prize, but also looking forward. But interestingly, he is 18th in DPM Delta, which means change. It means what his DPM has changed since the beginning of the season. So Darko's looked at what he's done, updated it, which looks forward in DPM as well. So 78th looking forward. He has moved up. He's had the 18th biggest positive change this season. So Darko has liked what he has done and thinks there's a level of sustainability in what he's been able to do. Some of that is going to be in his free throws. And that's that's probably the really big thing here for Harold. Again, we expect the minutes to come down for him, but will he, will he be able to um, yeah, maintain 80%? I don't think quite at 80, but mid to high 70s is a possibility, which is much better than the 60s and 70 that he had before in the past. So while we can look at Harrell as a sell high, I do believe that's the case. I do think that we have to recalibrate some about him, especially especially with that free throw percentage, which is trending absolutely in the right direction on pretty strong volume. And it's looking, it's looking good. And he is doing things really, really importantly for this Wizards team, contributing in a lot of the advanced stuff, which again is something that he normally doesn't do. So that is really, really important for us to pay attention to. So that was today's I Request Elaboration. I hope you got something out of that with Harold. I was surprised to see his on-offs. I was surprised to see the free throw percentage and also to see how that has impacted his future projections. I think that's really, really important to note. It's also important to note that Thanksgiving is coming up and Thanksgiving is a holiday. So much family, so much food. But a lot of that food is high calorie, especially the desserts. So why don't you bring Built Bar for your family Thanksgiving dessert? Instead of a slice of pie, which might be 300, 350, 400 calories, you throw cream on that, it's going to go out the window. Why don't you do Built Bar for dessert? Instead of a coconut cream pie, have a coconut Built Bar, just 130 calories. They're low carb, low sugar, low fat, and high protein, and covered in 100% chocolate. Your family, they're going to love it when you bring out the bo- bust out the box of Built Bars and go, boys, girls, Aunties, uncles, desserts on me. Yay! And then you bring out the built bars, you flick them around, and they taste them. You go, man, this tastes unbelievable. And you go, it is. It's the best tasting protein bar ever. Why don't you guys check out built.com and see all of the great new flavors they're releasing this month? And they'll go, sure, John. Although, all well, my name's Josh. So maybe they say, sure, Josh, go and check it out. 
We'll, we'll find out what the flavors are. That sounds awesome. Why don't you go to Built Bar, though? Go to Built.com and check out the range and use our promo code LOCK15 to save 15% off your order. The website is Built.com. The promo code is LOCK15. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever. I feel like that um, ad read was off the rails a little bit, <laughs> so I apologize. All right, let's look at today's Watfo. This comes from The Amp. Thank you, The Amp. What are the odds that Jimmy Butler finishes in the top 10 this season for category leagues? He's seventh at the moment. I think he can maintain top 10 value. I'm not 100% certain on it. I'm going to say it's a 67% chance that Jimmy Butler remains as a top 10 player this season, that he ends the year as a top 10 player on a per-game basis. He's been awesome. Seen in this picture here, pointing at Nikola Jokic. He's been awesome. There's no denying that. And I think he will remain as a top 10 player. Let's go into the top ads and top drops over the last 24 hours. The number one ad, and these guys, again, we talked about the benefit of the Sixers schedule earlier this week. Furkan Korkmaz up 26%. You'll see Danny Green's there up 19%. Shake Milton's up 9%. So much value in streaming those guys in this week. Royce O'Neal's up 19%. That's probably to stream him Tuesday. Um, Gary Payton up 12%. Curiously high number for Payton. I don't think he's much of a 12-team league guy. Uh, Terrence Mann and Luke Kennard, great schedule for the Clippers. They are sensational ads. You've already missed the Tuesday game, but we talked about that on the week preview to add them for this week. And then Josh the Hitman Hart with Brandon Ingram still unsure about his status. Hart has been up 6% as well. So they're the top ads. And if we look at the top drops in fantasy leagues, Eric Gordon's gone down 8%. Totally reasonable. Steven Adams down five. Interesting, but I do think that's probably the right call. Reddish down four and a half. Well, I wouldn't have dropped Cam Reddish before today's game. Um, uh, Malik Beasley down four. Yep, that's probably right. Mason Plumley down four. With Washington out, maybe he's a soft hold, but I don't mind the drop. Ken Birch down 4%. He's out the next two games, so that's okay. And then Sexo, with his knee injury, has been dropped in 3% of leagues. And again, I do think that probably is the right decision to drop Colin Sexton. I just think it's going to be a long time before he does actually return. Now, let's get into one of the only three games that we did have on... Um, whatever day this is, on Tuesday. And it was the Milwaukee Bucks. They get the victory in the end over the Sixers, 118-109. Punch Bob, Bobby Portis, 19-10, four threes, one steal, two blocks. And with Brooke Lopez out, Portis has tremendous value. He's a must-roster player. Clearly, in all leagues, I don't know when Lopez is coming back. you got to have Portis. Grayson Allen, another great game. He's the 69th ranked player. Giggity. 25 points, five threes, 62% shooting. He is a massive sell high. There's no Middleton. Holiday's working his way back. There's no Lopez. There's no DiVincenzo. All these guys are going to cut into Allen. He could still become a fringe 12-team league guy, but if I can sell him for top 100, I'd do it. If not, I hold on and ride it out. Drew Holiday, I've had multiple people tell me whether they should give up on Drew, whether they should drop Drew. That makes him a massive buy low. Eight, seven, and six with two steals and two blocks. 29% shooting. Four of 14 is terrible. You make that six of 14... And then you're talking 12, 7, 6, 2 steals, 2 blocks. And it's still not at his best. Like There's still plenty of room for growth there. Drew Holiday, must roster. Giannis, 13 and 16 is great. 4 assists is great, but no threes. Yuck. 46 from the field. Yuck. 54 from the line. Absolutely yuck. Unfortunate game from Giannis to see that disgusting drop in efficiency. His true shooting was under 50% in this game. Not a good game from him. While Connaughton is only a streamer, 8 points in 24, and Georgie Hill had 8, 4, and 1. He's only a stream option as well. Those guys do not demand 12 team value. But how about Shimmy Ojala? That's two pretty good games in a row. 11 and 8 with three threes, 100% shooting. Don't bank on it. But deeper leagues, short term, maybe you could look at Ojale. I wouldn't get too excited. It's hard to get too excited about the sixes because so many guys are out. But a lot to like. 39 minutes for Tyrese Maxey. 31 points, four threes, five rebounds, four assists, a steal, and a block. I do not know what happens when Ben Simmons comes back, if Ben Simmons comes back, if Ben Simmons gets traded. I don't know. What I do know is that Maxey... I don't, actually, I don't know this. What I presume is that Maxey will remain the starting point guard until Simmons is traded for a point guard or Simmons comes back. I don't think Milton is taking this position is what I'm trying to say. So Maxey is a must-roster guy. Great game from him. I think he's going to develop into a very, very good NBA starting player. And we've seen that already this year. Drummond, they keep setting his the rebound props too low. 17 and 20 with a steal and two blocks. That was easy money. While Shake Milton had 20 points and six assists um, in a starting role. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. 
interestingly, Doc Rivers said he was going to run a 10-man rotation. Instead, he ran a 7-man rotation. So Furkan Korkmaz played 45 minutes. Unfortunately, he went 2 of 18, which just destroys your field goal percentage. He's an excellent streamer. He is going to have some off nights, but you know, taking 18 shots, getting 5 rebounds, 5 assists, that's good value there. Toby Harris might be back this week. We don't know. Doc said he'll be back sooner than later. Embiid's going to miss, though. Um, Danny Green came off the bench in this game. Had nine points with three threes. He's an okay streamer, but not must roster. While we did get Paul Reed starting after playing like four minutes yesterday, he played 24. Six points, six rebounds, three steals, two blocks. I just want to see 30 minutes of Paul Reed. He'll put up great numbers. And he, these numbers are pretty good here, but it is hard to trust what Rivers is going to do. While Yang had 21 points in 24 minutes with five threes, or as Reggie Miller calls him, the Humpty Bus. What's a Humpty Bus? Reggie Miller just making up shit. What a shock that is. Um... We got five minutes of Charles Bassey for some reason in this one too. There was no Seth Curry. Um, he was injured with a sore foot. Hopefully he returns soon. But the Sixers were beat up, but they kept it pretty close. And encouraging performances from Nyang, Maxi, um, Milton was really good. And there is value with these guys having two more low-volume games during this week. Guys, let's um, let's talk about Bet Online because it is the number one place to place bets on basketball or on football for this upcoming season or whatever your sport is. It is the number one spot. So head to betonline.ag on their updated desktop interface or on your mobile device. Sign up using the promo code Locked On and get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit from basketball, football, the NHL, boxing, UFC, and right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait and take advantage right now of all of the great offers that Bet Online has for this upcoming season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Bet Online is where the game starts. All right, so let's take it across to the second game of the day. The Atlanta Hawks and the Utah Jazz. The Hawks lost five in a row now. That is obviously not an ideal scenario for them. They lose to the Jazz 110-98. Um, there was no Bogdanovich or DeAndre Hunter, so Fanta Pants Kevin Herter got a start. He'd hit eight threes combined for the season, and he hit six in this game. 28 points, 39 minutes, two blocks. Big game from Herter. But of course, he doesn't play anywhere near enough when everybody's healthy. So if Bogdanovich and Hunter come back, then there's no value in Herder. So don't get overawed by this. Trey Young was great, 27 with five threes and six assists, but they're in trouble this team. It's reverting back to that old, um, yeah, eight old paces, Nate McMillan. We just go, oh, what's this team doing? That's sort of what it feels like. It was great to see 35 minutes for Clint Capella on a back-to-back, 13 and 12, two steals, two blocks. Now, the free throws were shit house. You always expect that from Clint though. But it's just good to see the minutes and some of those other numbers come up. While with everyone out, we got more minutes from Cam Reddish. 16 points, four threes, 30 minutes. I don't trust him as anything more than a streamer at this point. They did start Solomon Hill. I don't know why. He had zero points in 22 minutes. While the, uh, the Italian cock, Danilo Gallinari. Hands off my cock! He played seven minutes for three points. I thought we'd get 20 minutes out of him. And the bench rotation continues to be wacky. Johnny Collins did have some early foul trouble, but just a disastrous night, especially on a night where I picked him to go over 14 and a half points. Seven points on 27% shooting for Collins. For a guy that should be hitting those at you know 55%, that's pretty disappointing. Four rebounds, two assists. He puts in good games and he has these shit ones. It is pretty frustrating for his overall value. Um, I thought we could see him push a little bit more, and it's great to see the minutes. Just a pretty disappointing night overall for Collins and for the Hawks. For the Jazz... The Don, Donovan Mitchell. He's Don. He's good. 27 points, five threes, five assists, three steals. He's playing really well. Top 20 over the course of the season so far. Been awesome. While Conley continues to play well. 12 points, two threes, six assists, and two steals. Conley's also a top 40 player this season, which you know, you know he's going to have rest, but he's playing well. While Jordan Clarkson. J-O-R-D-A-N-C-L-A-R-K-S-O-N. It's a good Clarko game. 16 points in 25 minutes. I feel like the only games he's had that have been good this year have been against Atlanta. Four threes. Not much else. Again, do not rely upon him as a must-roster 12 team. While O'Neal had 11, 5, and 4. One of the elite streaming guys out there. Now, he's the 103rd ranked player this season. So you might look at that and go, Josh, he probably is a must-roster 12 team league guy. And I'd say, yeah, fine. But I just think that streaming his spot probably brings more value bringing him in on those low-volume days. Like in every like 14-team league, he needs to be rostered for sure. In a 12-team, is no problem having him. There's just very little upside, I think, in his game. Hassan Whiteside, he did what he needs to do. The world! 
eight and eight with a block, while Gobert had nine and 14 with two steals and two blocks. Gobert had a lot of foul trouble, so that meant that Whiteside got more playing time, while Bogdanovich had 18 points. Just unfortunately for him, he did nothing else and did that really inefficiently. Ingles is not a 12-team league guy. It pains me to do this. Jack Armstrong. Get that garbage out of here! He's just not worth holding in 12-team leagues. Two points, four rebounds, one assist, and one steal for Jinglin Joe. All right, let's go on to the last game of the night with the Portland Trailblazers going down to the LA Clippers, 109-117. Yusuf Nurkic, 27 minutes. I just want him to play more, man. He's really good. 15 and 13, six assists, great efficiency, plus six. And him, him and Power were the only guys really positives, but they just don't play him enough minutes. He's a top 75 player, but it's still frustrating. Lillard, 27, five and six, which on the surface looks good, but no steals, no blocks. 31% from three. And again, the moment at the end, clutching his abdomen after a layup, it's just, I worry about what's going to happen with this injury. I, I don't think he's going to get shut down or have surgery, but I think it's going to bother him all year. And, and I'm not certain that he ends up as a top 10 player. Powell was really good. 23 points with five threes and three assists. What Covington, you get a triple one from Covington. That's always good. And then he adds in six assists. That's a bit fluky. He played 39 minutes. Now he is trending up and probably should be a 12-team league guy. But the guy who was maybe going to be somewhat of a uh, hindrance to him, Larry Nance. Get that garbage out of here! Now, I guess if you listen to things that I say, and you, you shouldn't always do that, but if you do, you would have dropped Nance weeks ago. He can go five points in nine minutes. While uh, McCullum, really big by low player. He's not going to be this bad from the line, especially. 13 points, three, three, three rebounds, sorry, three assists. Missed all of his threes, 50% from the line. He is going to be better with his shooting numbers, and he will jump up. Not to where he was at the beginning of the season, where he was putting up some really, really big numbers. But um, he's going to be better than this. I feel confident in saying that. On the Clippers, Paul George was great, 24, 9, and 7. Reggie Jackson, the minutes and the shots, they've been there all year. And finally, it's turning into production. 23.6 assists, a must-roster player. While the Clippers have got a great schedule, three more low-volume days this week. So Nick Batum, must-roster. 22.63, six rebounds in a revenge game. Eric Bledsoe, best game since the opener. 31, five and six, two steals and two threes. Now, I don't think he's going to remain a must-roster 12-team league guy, but again, for this week, he's great. Terrence Mann, you hold on to him. I don't think after that, he's going to be worth holding. I think the hype on him probably went too far. Um, it was good as a last round pick, but you know, he's been fine, like 120th, 130th ranked player, but it's not great. Seven and five for him, while the Duck Luke Kennard struggled for three points, but I'd hold him for the week ahead. Serge Ibaka, do not bother with him in 12-team leagues. He is very rusty, under six minutes, zero points, and they're playing three centers. While my man, Isaiah Hartenstein, had 14, two and three in 17 minutes, and Zubats had 11 and seven. If they're going to run a three-man rotation, Ibaka's value has got no chance of hitting, and Zubats is probably not going to remain as a 12-team league guy. All right, let's move on to talk about the top performers of the day. And I know plenty of you guys out there with that nostalgia fetish just want me to say monstrous line of the night. So here you go. The monstrous line of the night was Donovan Mitchell. He had the best performance of the day. The young gun of the night was in fact Tyrese Maxey, who had the second best performance of the day. And wouldn't you know it, the waiver wire line of the night goes to Fanta Pants Kevin Herter, who went bananas in a fill-in start with Bogdanovich and Hunter out. They're your waiver wire monstrous and young gun of the night. It's just the best performance of the day, but people love hearing me say those words. So there you go. After after Herter was Drummond, then Portis, Nurkic, Drummond and uh, Maxi, Drummond, Portis must be rostered. Nurkic, Trey Young, Grayson Allen, good uh, uh, roster guy for the moment. Lillard and George Niang at number 10. He's probably a 12-team league guy, just at least for the short term with the Sixers schedule. In terms of guys available in over 50 or well, yeah, in over 50% of leagues, Herder, yeah. Bledsoe, yep, he's an ad for the rest of this week. Ojale, deeper leagues. Paul Reed. Yep, good two more games left this week that could be valuable. Might not be, but could be. Nassi Little at five. Zeller, Pascal, Hartenstein, Connaughton, and Hill to round out the top 10. Not really much to see with those guys. And then lastly, we move in to look at the top 10 points leagues, guys. Giannis was number one today, followed by Drummond, Maxi, Don Mitchell, Paul George, Clint Capella, Bob Portis, Kevin Herter, Yusuf Nurkic, and Damian Lillard. That will do it for today's show. Don't forget to follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. Check out the Locked On Bets podcast as well, wherever you find uh, podcasts. they got all, uh, all your winners for you over there. On YouTube, thumb me up, leave a comment down below, hit the notification bell, and subscribe. Guys, we're done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.